Hi everyone, thanks for joining my channel. So this is the first video for my channel and it took me a while to figure out what I thought I wanted to focus on because it feels kind of like a little bit of pressure to get the first one right. Uh, and what I decided on was to do a flip through of my most recent sketchbook that I have finished. This happens to be the first sketchbook that I've ever finished cover to cover because I tend to go through different sketchbooks and not really fill them and then move on to another one. So I thought that I would flip through this one and the style in this is pretty consistent. So that's another reason why I chose to do this. I thought that this might be a good place to start because this way you can see kind of the style that I have been drawing in lately and what you might expect to see from me in the future. Although definitely I like to experiment and things always change. But this is a good jumping off point and I'll also be talking about some of the materials that I use when I do just my regular sketching and doodling. So let's get started. Um, so this is a moleskin hardcover sketchbook. Uh, I, lo I do love moleskins. The paper is pretty thick in their sketchbook series, so that way you can use some different materials and it doesn't bleed through the paper. So I've really enjoyed using this sketchbook. And um, so on the front here I've got some stickers, and this sticker is one of the tattoo designs by Fukari and I just love this, it's so cute, so I just thought it'd be a cute way to decorate the cover. <clears throat> Alright, so I drew this in here and this is kind of just a quote that was inspiring to me throughout the uh, couple of months that I was filling in this notebook and I was at work one day and I didn't have I had, during my lunch break, I didn't really have enough time to do a full drawing or anything, but I designed this and kind of colored it in. And these were just my ideas that I was using for different topics for December, which maybe I'll talk about later. All right. So I actually got this sketchbook in 2014, uh, up here this is October 2014, and I started doodling in it, but I was in, I just started my graduate program at this time, so this really ended up getting put aside and I didn't finish it for quite some time because I just got so busy. So these are just some sketches from when I first got the sketchbook and I thought I was going to use it. So just some um, figure practices and just doodles. And this here is actually, this is a mind map or a flow chart of how to increase your creativity. So I am thinking I'll probably have a post about um, ways to increase creativity sometime. But these are just all different categories um, that you can use. So I'll probably skip through here. This isn't really, these are just doodles that I did in my free time, I might have been waiting for the bus or in between classes or something and I just had a pen on me so I just uh, did these different doodles. During this time I thought I was really going to get into um, these like design doodles but that didn't really happen, although it's pretty therapeutic to do at the time. And <laughs> this page, I had just bought some new art supplies and I was waiting somewhere so I wasn't at home and I accidentally spilled some on the page and I had to figure out how to quick dry it up because I had to leave so I just started spreading it all over the page to try and thin it out and make it dry faster so there's nothing really going on here. Um, these are just some pen tests and different paints and I was trying to do some flower studies but I still want to go back to that. Uh, more pen tests. <clears throat> Just a doodle. All right so these I did in the summer of 2016 so all before this was uh, before my grad program and now I put it aside and now this is after my grad program was over and I just did these sketches from studies from pictures that I thought were interesting and I actually uh, colored them in with some of the Faber-Castell 
Pit Artist Pen. So um, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if it's going to focus on it or not, but um, I like these pens. I just have six of them in different colors of gray, and so it was fun for me to do some grayscale shading with this. And this has actually kind of inspired me for the style of what I would be using for Inktober. Um, so just some hand studies and another sketch from an outfit that was interesting online. Um, and these are gesture sketches. So I actually had a re these originally in pencil sketches, but the one kind of downside to the moleskin journal is that Definitely when you're sketching in pencil, it can, graphite pencil that is, it can tend to smear and smudge and the pages were kind of get smudged together. So I just went over these in the different shades of the Faber-Castell pit markers that I have and then erased away the pencil. And really I was just going for the silhouettes anyway, so it turned out all right, I guess. Um, this one actually was a sketch and I hadn't originally done it in color, but later on, when I was in the month of October, I got one of the um, Pentel color brush pens. So I got it in red and I thought that it was um, really cool to have this pop of color separate from the black. So I actually went back and erased the pencil sketch of her skirt and colored it in in red. Um, this was just a study of some stuff on my desk and a little sketch that I don't like very much. <laughs> and now we're getting close to Inktober. So um, during the month of October, I mostly did sketches in pencil and then I inked them with some ink markers and sometimes colored them in with different colors or with those Faber-Castell uh, markers. So this one was a pose that was inspired by the uh, Masters of Academy Dynamic Poses book. This has been super helpful to me. I have gone through there and looked for some dynamic and interesting poses to draw to kind of give me a better sense of movement. So here we go. Here we are in Inktober. Uh, so my process for Inktober started out as drawing in pencil and then going over it in um, marker or in actually in Pigma Micron pens. So these pens here, uh, I tend to use 0.01 and 0.005 uh, because I like a really fine lines. But um, I later on did get that red brush color pen so I wanted to try out that one and then again you can see in some of the darker colors here that I was using the Faber-Castell pens to uh, fill in the dark areas. So I'll probably just flip through a lot of these. Um, this one actually was the first one that I got uh, my very first box from Art Snacks, and I love Art Snacks. I've looked into some different monthly subscription boxes of art supplies, and Art Snacks has the best price, and it definitely has great materials for the price. So my very first box that I got in October was, had this um, Liquitex ink, and this stuff is super awesome. Um, so it is. Um, an ink, an acrylic ink, but it spreads like watercolor. So you can water it down and spread it, paint it on just like watercolor. So that's what I did here. I was just experimenting with it. Um, and I really, really liked it. So you'll see that I use this a lot in the rest of my Inktober. There's also some white highlights here. So I liked, I started out with this um, Uniball Sig Signal pen, but I didn't really like how uh, wide the tip is. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, but the tip is actually pretty big. So I didn't really feel like I had very much control with that. So later on I got um, a jelly roll pen and this has an actually a much finer tip. Uh, so I actually like using this a lot better. And then sometimes I do use this Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and I use this just with a regular paintbrush. And if you use a really small paintbrush, you can get some good detail. All right, so um, just more drawings here. And this is again with that um, special color of Muted Violet from the Art Snacks October box. 
And then here you can start to see that I moved from using pencil to using the um, a colored colored pencil to do my underdrawings. So I like the kind of the softness that it gives it, but it gives it a certain look. And what I'm doing for this is using the Prismacolor Verithin pencils. So these are nice, they're kind of hard, so they don't leave as waxy of a feel as regular Prismacolor pencils. Um, just more sketches. I really liked how this one turned out. Um, this is the first one with a background, so as you can probably tell, I'm weaker with doing backgrounds than characters. So most of these don't have a background, and I really just focus on the the pose and the clothing that they're wearing, but I did include a background on this one. And like I was saying before, because the paper is so thick on here, you can use different materials, so I actually did go in with some watercolor to color her skin on this one. So here's another background. I thought I would be ambitious and I actually ended up going in Photoshop, scanning this in Photoshop and turning this into a digital painting and the whole thing is colored in. And this one is the first one that has kind of some sparkly sparkle to it. So you can actually see here that it's got some reflectiveness and I had been reading through and looking through other people's videos and photos of what they'd been doing for Inktober and a lot of them suggested this um, set of fine tech mica paints which are watercolor paints that are reflective so these are super super pretty and I had just gotten this set so I wanted to try it out on her so that's why that's reflective and you might notice that in some of the other ones I really got into that so I tried to use it whenever I could um, so this one, I had ordered a set of the Copic multi-liners in sepia and I wasn't really sure if I was going to like the way the color came out because I do like how nice and defined the black is. So I just tried it out on this one and it's okay. I think I would use it in a different way in the future. But this one turned out alright. So again, just more um, sketches and doodles. This one was... Um, another one of the poses from that Masters of Academy book. As were these two. And these two are probably two of my favorites from Inktober. I just liked how um, dynamic they looked and they looked like such warriors to me. So I really enjoyed how doing these ones. And this one I also scanned into Photoshop and colored it into a, a little bit more of a finalized version. Uh, so these two drawings, when I originally sketched them out, I really, really was not impressed with how they turned out and I didn't really like them. So I just experimented with what I was doing on these for the colors because I didn't really care if the lines didn't turn out well or the colors uh, ended up something I didn't like. It didn't really bother me. And they actually ended up all right after I colored them in. So just goes to show that with a little more work, you can turn something into something better. Um, yeah, so this one I also, this one I actually like the sketch so much, I think it's just so expressive and soft that I was really scared to ink it, <laughs> so I just left it the way it was. And I actually scanned this one into Photoshop and colored it. Um, I think I posted that on my Instagram. Alright, so this one is in blue because I had got, I think I got the, this, the pen on this one also from an Art Snacks box. So this is the Pentel Sign Pen, and this has this really cool um, bullet nib, but it's a little bit flexible, so it actually bends a little bit, so you can get some varying line weights with that. So I turned out to really like that one. Um, these two, again, I didn't really like so much, um, so I didn't really care what happened with them. And I actually did this one, instead of with markers, I did it with ink, so. I've been using the Higgins um, just regular ink for this and this is non-waterproof ink so this um, isn't as permanent as the other ones. All right, um, this one was actually this really bizarre outfit that I saw um, on 
Pinterest, but it was from a fashion show and I just thought it was so strange, but intriguing. So I drew that out. And this is getting toward the end of Inktober. So at the end of October, I thought I hadn't really done anything related to October and Halloween happens to be my favorite holiday. So I did a pair of witches on here and I used a reference picture and I've actually seen other people draw this exact same picture. So it's kind of funny actually. And this one is one of my favorite ones from all of Inktober. I don't know if it's what it is exactly, if it's the shiny gold that I used or if it's the pink watercolor or the tattoos or hair, but I just happen to really, really like this one. All right, so this is my first and maybe my only two pager in this whole sketchbook. Um, this one is based on a photo that I saw on Lookbook. So sometimes I go to lookbook.nu for outfit designs because the people there just have such great sense of fashion and I really thought this one was interesting so I went ahead and drew it out. This is the actual end of October so this one I did on Halloween and there's the background again yeah so I actually colored this one also in Photoshop um, so you might sense a trend that when I get nervous that I'm going to screw something up on paper, I'll just scan it in Photoshop and play around in Photoshop instead. And then this picture, I actually colored in it with uh, watercolor, but uh, it gave me the idea for Diversember. So I don't have my Diversember sketches in here. I have them in a different sketchbook, but my idea for Diversember was just, much like Inktober, <laughs> was to spend the entire month of December doing drawings of people who were diverse for different reasons. So I didn't make it all the way through the month, but I did do a little bit more than half of the month and every single day was somebody from a different country or a different religion or um, different, different kind of background, different ability or different gender or gender identity. So that was a really fun month. Um, these two are two more sketches from um, Lookbook and it's obviously the same girl in the same outfit, but I didn't want to post these because I just felt like it was more of a study and it was too much of a copy from what, what her, exactly what her picture was. So I just kept them in here for me. Um, and then the rest of this book is mostly just sketches from November. I really felt inspired by having done drawings every single day in October. So I wanted to keep doing that. So I just drew most days in November. Um, and I really got into coloring the drawings in with watercolor. So a lot of these are finished with watercolor uh, compared to the other ones. So <laughs> there's a story behind this one. I actually have this as a digital artwork now and I really wanted to do her dress with this like starry galactic background and have it kind of fade into the background. So I took some masking fluid to mask off the rest of her so I wouldn't get that all messed up. And I didn't realize that I actually had used the wrong masking fluid. I used permanent masking fluid instead of the kind that you rub away. So it, like messed up the whole rest of it. And then when I went to color over it in black, it got this, it got shiny and crackly because it was not supposed to go over that. So I got kind of frustrated. So I scanned it into Photoshop and finished it. And I actually like how the digital one turned out, so I guess it's all right. And this one is one of my most finished ones in the sketchbook and probably my favorite one. Um, the hairstyle came from a picture that I found on Pinterest, but the colors and everything else I just did on my own. So I really enjoyed doing this one. It was really fun and I love the color scheme. Um, so these are just some simpler sketches actually based off a girl that I saw in Starbucks. Uh, during break I went to get some extra coffee and uh, her haircut and her clothes and her glasses were just super cool so I thought I would draw them. And then I actually drew this on a bigger sheet of paper and painted it in watercolor. Slightly different but um, yeah I liked the way that one turned out. 
So this sketch here, um, I really like how soft this looks. I decided to just leave the red pencil and not ink it. And then I colored it with watercolor and those Liquitex inks. And I think it turned out really pretty. And I also was really excited about the gold inks. So you can see that I have that moon gold there, um, which I really liked. Um, so some more work sketches. This one, I was trying to design this character out a little bit. Um, she's a witch with a raven, and I was just drawing out maybe what some different themes of her jewelry would look like. Um, more sketches. This one, I think, was maybe a pose from that um, book, from the Masters of Academy book. And this one I really liked. And so I scanned this one into Photoshop and played around with some color for a while. This one was inspired by a picture on Pinterest that I really liked. And she was a Japanese woman, so I was trying a little bit better to have more unique characteristics in her face and not have all of my faces on my characters look exactly the same. So that's what it's going for here. And this pose was again from the uh, Masters of Academy uh, pose book, but the outfit I think was also from Pinterest. Um, so here is the kind of the end of November and beginning of December, and I was getting into that December idea, so trying to sketch out some different ideas for different characters. So here's just some more sketches, um, again with poses from that Master of, Masters of Anatomy book. This one I really like how it turned out, I think I just like her face and her hair, I think she's pretty, so. Um, this mermaid I really like actually, I like her pose and her the way her hair is flowing in her face, so I think I'm going to try to turn this into a more finished piece sometime soon. And this one was just based off of completely around this sweater. So I actually got this sweater at this point in time, on this date, and I it's so big and so soft and cozy, so I really just wanted to draw the, the sweater. Um, this one, I don't really know where this came from, but I, I just really like how, it, how soft and pretty it turned out. And then on this one, we went to go see Moana, and that is such a great movie. And it just really put me in a really super good mood, so I really wanted to draw that character. And I actually think it turned out pretty good. It turned out kind of in her likeness, which is difficult for me, especially with faces. So I like the way that one turned out. Um, this one was going to be a design for maybe for a holiday card, but I didn't end up using it. I ran out of time to actually send them out, so, um, oops, I guess. <laughs> and this one I drew for my 100th post on Instagram, so I thought that was pretty exciting and I wanted to uh, make note of it. And then here we are actually into January, so I really like how both of these turned out. This one was just for fun. Um, and I went back to inking, so a lot of the previous ones I had just been doing sketches with the Verithin, Prismacolor Verithin pencils, and I kind of missed the way that my Inktober drawings would look with ink, so I went back to ink a drawing and I like how this one turned out. And then this one was actually for the 2006 versus 2016 um, artist meme that was going around on Instagram, so I redrew a uh, a sketch that I had drawn like 10 years ago and colored it just to see my progress. So I like how this one turned out. And then these are just the very last sketches in here. They're, I don't think they're very good, but it was just to finish up the last few pages of the sketchbook. So that's it. That's the very end. Um, then I just have a list of my favorite artists that I was most inspired by this year. And then this sticker, which is a drawing by Cameron Stewart. So that's it. That's the end of my sketchbook. Um, thank you all for watching and until next time.